Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, and I've got a Bach problem, and I need to discuss it with you frankly and openly and simply reveal the ugly, horrifying truth. I don't really much like Bach. I just don't. I've tried. I've tried endlessly. I'm doing the Bach cantata schlep. It's going to take probably the rest of my life, and I doubt I'll ever finish it, but I'm willing to do it because when I listen to individual things, I find the music thrilling. But when it's over, I just, I, I, don't, I don't feel as though something wonderful has happened. It doesn't make me happier. It makes me happy while it's happening. Let's put it that way. But even the keyboard music and the other things, and I want to tell you what bothers me about Bach. Why do I want to tell you? Because a bunch of you have written things saying like, why aren't you talking about Bach's keyboard works? And, and I have, right? I mean, I've done bits where I've talked about the well-tempered clavier and bits of it and the Goldberg variations and, and a couple of times works that I truly like because I do love some of it. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't dislike it. It, it just doesn't move me the way other music does. And I suppose that makes me a little unusual because it does move lots and lots of people. But I will say one thing. You know, uh, if you know me at all by now, you know that I am absolutely allergic to cults, cult of personality type things. And there is a huge Bach cult. I am personally convinced because I've been in this business for a long time and spoken to billions of people about Bach and their love of Bach and Bach this and Bach that. And remember on MASH, Radar O'Reilly, ah, Bach. You just walk around and say that and everybody thinks that you're somehow profound. And that's the problem I have with Bach. I am convinced that 99% of the people who profess to love Bach have never actually listened to him. If they did, they would be in real trouble <laughs> because, because Bach is a difficult composer. And I just think it's, it's worth pointing that out. You know, Bach in his own lifetime was, was criticized, of course, for writing down all of his ornaments and for being unnecessarily complicated. And his, his you know, his students and his, his followers and, you know, and later generations always laugh at those people and say, ah, oh, they were such Philistines. How could they possibly say that about our beloved Bach? I mean, it makes us feel superior to, to crap on these people in Bach's day for saying that his music was complicated. Well, here's a news flash. His music is complicated. It's complicated and it's difficult. And it's, for my, to my way of thinking, it's relentless. It's sadistic sometimes in its, in its relentlessness. One of the reasons it is, is because, is because of the aesthetic that Bach was working under. You know, in the Baroque period, there was something called the doctrine of the single affect. And the single affect doctrine held that a piece of music, a movement or a section should only express one kind of feeling at once. C.P.E. Bach, who I adore, Bach's son, um, rebelled against the single affect theory. His idea was you should pack as much variety of emotion into everything as much as you possibly could. It was totally the opposite of his dad. Bach went for the single affect thing, I, I think, with a bit of a vengeance. And the result of that sometimes is because Bach's music is more complex, and that means longer than a normal single affect movement. You know, usually a single affect movement's like, okay, if it's two minutes long, who cares? But if it's 10 minutes long, then it's like, it's like the Chinese water torture. You know, that affect is, 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 is hammering at you as long as Bach is rambling on. Oh, I shouldn't say that Bach never rambles. Everything is a miracle of concision and intellectual perspicacity. But, you know, if you take something, for example, like that, the D minor harpsichord concerto, BWV, what is it, 1052, and it goes, and 
And then the harpsichord comes in. It does that for like 10 bloody minutes. And it's brutal. It's just brutal because Bach is rhythmically extremely mechanical. That was what Baroque music was. Baroque music was you wound it up and let it go for the entire movement. So it goes like chugga 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 and there's a limit to how much of that stuff you can take, or at least I have a limit. I have a limit. Now, I happen to adore BWV 1052, but I've got to be in the mood for it. I've really got to be in the mood for it because it's a tough, tough work. The slow movement, oh my God, it's so grim. It's absolutely one of the most miserable pieces of music you've ever heard in your life. And things like, I mean, forget the St. Matthew Passion. You know, I, I mean, I, I, I took it upon myself because I was a professional critic, of course. Yeah, I have to know this stuff. You have to. You have to listen to it. You have to learn it. You have to be able. You have to be able to make comparisons between recordings, to make recommendations. And and I, I don't. I don't take my own feeling for the music as the basis on which I make those recommendations. I try and listen as objectively as I possibly can and find the ones that have the su most superior musical values. But it's a chore to get through a lot of this stuff. Um, one of you recently said to me I should do something with the, the, the partitas, the keyboard partitas. The keyboard partitas are one of the few works that Bach published in his lifetime. Um, you know, there are six of them. They are dance suites, Baroque dance suites. And I listen to those pieces in my car almost exclusively on both harpsichord and piano because, because they are wonderful pieces to fill up lots of time, but they're long. They're 25, 30 minutes each in multiple movements. And harmonically, they're very, very sophisticated and really kind of scary. I mean, genuinely scary. I, I, I like them. Again, I enjoy them when I'm in my car, <laughs> but I, I wouldn't play six of them at once. And one of the problems is that people tend to overindulge in Bach. I think Bach is fabulous in small bits. You know, when Wanda Landowska recorded the Well-Tempered Clavier, you know, she recorded one or two preludes and fugues at a time. She didn't go and sit down and play all 24 of them once. Today, people do that stuff. I remember there was a Carnegie Hall concert where Yo-Yo Ma did all six Bach cello suites all at once in one concert in a room that holds more than 2,000 people. It was just like one cello sitting. You had to be insane to go and endure that. Absolutely insane. I, I can't imagine what anybody would have gotten out of it. I really can't, except that they all came out saying, ah, Bach, oh, Bach, it was so spiritual. It was so spiritual because it was bereft of any other quality. There were no dynamics, there was no color, there was no variety, there was, you know, I mean, it's, it's nuts. It's just nuts. I mean, the solo violin partitas too. I mean, the chicon, you know, the, the big chicon and the D minor partita, one of the greatest pieces of music ever to emanate from the human mind. It's thrilling. It really, really is. I can't stand the sound of a solo violin for more than about 10 minutes. I can do the chicon because it's so great and it's longer than 10 minutes. But, you know, I, I'll listen to one of them. And that's fine. One sonata or one partita is more than plenty for the entire day. And I know, again, there are people who could just sit through and listen to all of them and just think it's all great. And more power to them. I, 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 I don't disagree with it. But the reason I am I am confessing this 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 horrible lacuna in my musical physiognomy is because I, I, I really think it's important that everybody understand that there's nothing wrong with this. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with not liking all of Bach, with not 
with, not with, with, with saying, geez, it's just not for me. I really don't like that. It just drones on endlessly, or I find it terribly complicated and, and, and expressively kind of dismal and depressing, which I think a lot of Bach really is. A lot of Bach is joyous and wonderful too. Don't get me wrong. You know, when someone writes as much music as he does, you've got every right to pick and choose. One of my linchpins for getting into Bach, for really enjoying Bach, is the organ trios. Because the organ trios are, are absolutely stunning examples of pure three-part counterpoint. And, and the interplay of musical lines, if it's played, if, if they're played on a, an attractive sounding organ with a good pedal board, it's, it's one of the most intellectually fascinating things I've ever heard. And the slow movements are very affecting too. And they're not too long. You know, it was like 10 minutes, you know, three movements. It's delightful. I love the organ trios. I really do. So, you know, it's not as if, it's not as if I'm trying to, to condemn Bach or, or make, you know, I mean, you can't, you can't say there's anything wrong with Bach or people are going to think you're crazy. And I don't think there was anything wrong with him. I think he was a genius. He was an extraordinary genius, but he had a very, very definite style, a very, very strong personality, and a rather, as I said, relentless and unyielding way of expressing that personality in the music that he composed. And I think that that our appreciation of, of him, or at least the bits of him that we like, that we really like, will be enhanced by taking him seriously enough to admit that he's not easy, that he's actually somebody who can be off-putting, and that the difficulty is part of the music, and some people will be up to it, and some people won't be, and some people will have a limit to their tolerance, and others won't, and it's perfectly fine either way. So that, my friends, is my Bach problem. And I'm hoping that by expressing my Bach problem, I can maybe maybe make you uh, or encourage you to be uh, more serious listeners, to give the music the attention it deserves, and give it give it the respect, and the, the you know give it the respect of, of disliking it, of saying no, it's too much for me, it's too hard for me, it's too this, it's too that. I don't have to like it. I think that's more honest. And I think perhaps Bach himself would have been uh, rather, rather pleased if some people did that, because he would know then that people have actually listened and listened hard and tried. And, and eventually, uh, I mean, this is a lifetime project. I keep listening to it. I don't discard it. And every so often I put something on it and it hits me and I go, whoa, that's great. Where's that been all my life? And it's rather wonderful to know that I still have that in my future, even with a composer as well known as Bach. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you for joining me. Take care.